This lesson is for Algebra 1102, and I'm looking at pages 34 through 37. Hopefully you did uh, pretty well on pages 31 through 35, the addition method. Those are, those are easy, okay? Because, uh, yeah, you just add the two equations, and they make it work out pretty easily that one of the equations will, um, or one of the variables will cancel out, okay? So, um, and then you just solve from there, solve for the other variable, plug it in, and you know, you can just keep going. So that's, yeah, page 33, not too bad, okay? You think, hey, I got this. Then they come to the more about addition method, and this is where it gets a little trickier, but um, together I think we can do this, okay? And this is one of my favorite ways of solving it because it will work for every equation. Whereas the graphing gets kind of messy with a lot of them. Substitution works great if you have one variable that does not have a coefficient, okay? Uh, like just a plain old y or a plain old x, you could solve for that, plug it into the other one. But this method works for every single one, all right? And notice in these two examples that I have up here on the board, and both of these are from your homework. I'm not gonna solve them totally, but I'm gonna help you set them up, okay? But in both cases, notice we have a coefficient in front of all of them, and that's why we have to do something in order to solve it. I'm going to start with the one down here, and then I can erase it and get it out of the way. Let me use um, green. Hopefully you can see that okay. And hopefully the green works. So I'm looking at this, and there's, you know, actually, there's, again, there's so many different ways you can do this and get the right answer. You don't have to, there's not just one right way. I'm looking at this one and saying, you know what, if I wanted to get rid of x, I could multiply this equation through by negative 2, okay? And if I did that, I would have negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 4. See how I did that? Negative 2 times negative 2 and negative 2. And then put the 4x minus 9y equals negative 1 underneath. And then I could add these two equations. Okay? And then the x's would cancel out. Um, but another way is I can look at this and say, you know what? If I just multiply this one through by 3, this will give me a 9 here, okay? And then once I have a 9, positive 9y, I can just add this equation to it, and the negative 9y will cancel out, okay? So multiplying everything by 3 would give me 6x, 9y, and 6. Okay, now add straight down and the y's cancel out. Negative 9 or positive 9y, negative 9y, gone. So you have 10x equals 5. Uh-oh, looks like we're going to have a fraction. You know how to do fractions, okay? So you get a fraction for x and then you can plug that into either equation and solve for y, so you'll probably get fractions for both the x and the y on that one. All right, let's talk about this one. This one's kind of messy, but same method, all right? They're all positive. Hmm. You know, honestly, in a case like this, you just got to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one do I want to get rid of? And uh, I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily say, you know what? I want to. I want to get rid of the x's. And uh, so the way we do that is we need to find. I keep using the term common denominator. I guess actually it's the common multiple. Okay, the least common multiple of the two and the three, and that would be the number six, right? So if I multiply this equation through by two, and this one by negative three, and I'm talking the whole equation, multiply everything through, then I would end up with, notice, six x, and down here, negative six x. Beautiful, because now when I add the equations, the x's will be gone, but I have to finish. I have to do everything in the equation. So I'm going to distribute the 2 times the positive 14, I'm positive 7, get 14y. 2 times 16 equals 32. Did you say that before I did? Hopefully. Uh, negative 3 times, now nah, positive 5 would be negative 15y. Negative 3 times 13 is negative 30 nine, and guess what, I'm gonna stop there, okay? You can finish it, because now you can see that this will cancel. You're gonna get something x equals something. Keep solving and you find x. Once you know x, 
Now you can plug it into, let's say you plug it in here, okay? And then you just solve this equation to find the corresponding y value. Every time, you're going to end up with an x and a y value as your answer. It's an ordered pair. And just to remind you, it goes back to the idea that it could have been graphed, and it would be a, a point where the two lines cross. So that's why we give an x and a y value. That, whatever numbers you come up with, could satisfy both equations, okay? Hopefully you do well with that and uh, with the upcoming checkup.